Hey, so quick question. Have you ever seen that one History Channel TV series, Man Who Built America? Have you heard of that, Brooke? Nope. Okay. It's all, you know, just about the industrials, right? Well, today, we're going to be talking about the men who murdered America. Should be fun. Sounds good. Should be a lot of fun. So, we had this school system, right? By the time you get around to the late 1800s, about half the states had instituted it. And it was not good by any means whatsoever. But it wasn't... I guess it, it could have been a lot worse, and it is today. So, there were these, um, there was a group of men who had a wonderful idea. It was, hey, what if we collectivized the mind, didn't teach how to read, didn't teach math, didn't teach history, basically fought a war on intelligence, openly rejected and fought against God, and, you know, tried to transform America into a communist state. That was their idea. That was the idea. So how did this happen? And there's probably a plane in the background, which you can hear right now. In the 1880s, there were a couple of guys who went over to Leipzig in Germany to learn about all about eugenics, about reading, about psychology, everything, right? All, all, everything in science. These men were Stanley Hall, James Earl Russell, James McKean Cattell, and uh, Charles Judd. By the way, James McKean Cattell was really into the hallucinogenics. Just a uh, fun fact there. But anyway, these guys were all in Leipzig, and they learned all about, you know, we got to teach kids whole words. James McKean Cattell did some experiments where he found that supposedly the adults read words as whole and not individual letters, so that we, we must throw out phonics. We must have whole word. They were taught eugenics. They were taught what Darwin and Galton said. They were taught all about history, about the philosophers like Plato, who had, who had advocated, openly advocated utopia, and they believed, hey, what if we dumbed down an entire nation in order to get that utopia? And it would be something like what was depicted in the 1886 book Looking Backward by Edward Bellamy. That would be the goal. And that was what was in the book. A communist America in the year 2000 where everyone is happy, everything is free, the women are beautiful, you get it. So anyway... They all came back to America, and well, these you know these universities, Johns Hopkins University of Chicago, Columbia Teachers College, Hopkins, all these universities were like, whoa, we got the most educated people in the world. Get them in here. Get them. Get them. Get them. We want them. Put them in heads of psych, heads of philosophy. Have them teach people. Have them train future elite members of society. That was the idea, because I mean these colleges had. They were the, these were the most educated, quote unquote, people in the world. So why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we want them to practically run our universities? So these men, these four men plus a few others, get really high positions in all these universities, and they teach a new generation of Hegelians, which is basically the statist, uh, idealist views of Hegel, the German philosopher. They taught materialism. They taught atheism. They taught people to, you know, it's one thing to not care about God or to, you know, not really believe in it, but not really do anything about it. It's another thing to spend your whole entire life fighting against God. And that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to completely get rid of him. And they wanted to, they wanted to collectivize everything. To literally, uh, do, um, one of their students, John Dewey, we talked about him a lot. He said that we should collectivize the mind. The mind should no longer be part of the individual. The mind should be part of the public. That was his idea. And to do this again, we're going to have dumbing down. We're going to have whole word. We're going, which is just, which you cannot learn to read with whole word. If you don't know what it is, it's where you teach kids that basically English is Chinese. That the is not three letters. It's one word. You don't teach the alphabet. You don't teach the sounds of the letters. You just teach whole words. And it's a completely bogus argument. It's been rejected hundreds and hundreds of times by scientific studies. Phonics has been shown to be superior. But these men did not care, and they all they all wrote books on it, right? John Dewey wrote uh, books like School and Society, Democracy and Education. Uh, Edward Thorndike, another student from these Leipzig guys, he wrote a book on on rat psychology and saying, "Hey, this why don't we why don't we apply rat psychology to humans?" Oh, they, they thought they thought they had they thought humans and rats were very much alike. That's 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 what they thought. They thought they learned similarly, they functioned similarly. I mean, why not, right? Why not? And then you had. 
uh, The Psychology and Pedagogy of Education by Edmund Tui, who was a, a student of, again, one of these Leipzig guys. He was a student at Hopkins, and he wrote a book called, like I said, The Psychology and Pedagogy of Education, where he advocated, he used emotion, he, used, he painted colorful pictures of what a world would look like if we just, if we just used whole word instead of phonics, right? Because who likes phonics? Who likes learning how to read? So that was, that was the rosy picture they painted. They were all very um, idealistic, acting off what they had found in certain books, like Looking Backward, Republic, uh, Laws, all those books by Plato, Bellamy, everyone else. That was what they were acting off of, and they were actively pursuing the utopia, where everyone is going to be happy. That was the idea. So how did they how did they do this, right? Well, you had a lot of people in the textbook companies that were connected to the universities doing this, Harvard, Stanford, etc. You had people like Alexander Inglis, and I believe his name was Elwood, Cu I think it's Elwood Coverley. It's Cu Coverley is his last name. You had Inglis and Coverley who wrote about how the true purpose of schooling is to subjugate people and group them into class systems. That's the purpose of schooling. And the purpose of schooling is to, to have one class which will be dumbed down. They won't know math. They won't know reading. They won't know literate. They won't be literate. They won't know science. They won't know history. They won't know anything. And then you have another class which knows all of this stuff, which knows how, which... You know, they're, they're, and they are, they are, as Darwin would say, they are the favored race. Favored race. They would know everything. They would be smart people. They would be educated. That was the idea, and that's what we have today. If you look at what, you know, all these politicians' kids go to private schools. You know, there was a scandal a few months back when Elizabeth Warren said, you know, Elizabeth Warren, former presidential candidate, she said, oh, my, my kids went to public school. No, they didn't. They went to public school for like two years, and they went to private school for the rest of their schooling. Because private schools, the private boarding schools, the elite private schools... They are made to create an elite which will govern America. This was laid out. And again, the objective is utopia. Utopia is the most intoxicating ideology ever to be conceived. That was the aim. And these men, they, because, because they had connections to the publishing companies, the publishing companies stopped making phonics. They started to make whole word instead. And then you had new math in the 1950s where, it, where you... They made a math system, literally, so kids could not apply it to real life, to separate it from science and from all the other subjects where you could possibly use math, to make it, and ha have it in a vacuum. Right, math itself, math itself is nothing, right, Producer Brooke? Math itself isn't, isn't anything. You have to combine it with stuff for it to actually be useful. Right, unless, like, s simple everyday problems, but if you're getting right. more advanced math, it has to be connected to science or statistics or something but that's not what we do that's never ever ever what we do and all these word the word problems they, again this is all intentional the word problems are completely crazy hypotheticals which would never happen and could really be figured out very simply if you know you had the full context of the situation so it's it's the new math it's the reading thing and then you had people like uh people like edward thorndike who again did the experiments on rats and all that who said, who basically said that I, I believe this this might be this might not be a direct quote but this is what he was saying he said that the traditional subjects are intrinsically of little value the traditional subjects being math history science and English those were the traditional subjects so they basically had schooling declare a war on intelligence our schools are waging a war on intelligence while you have all these private boarding schools and let me just say okay so i i guess we're about have having to wrap up on time here which uh kind of sucks i was hoping to go on for another five minutes but i guess we got to animate this anyway um in 1870s and 1860s you had books published by Dar by charles darwin and francis galton the origin of species descent of man and that's not to say the theory of evolution is incorrect the theory of evolution is more than likely correct but that's not the point here the point is that they were saying that there's 52 races the uh the irish spanish italians all are at the bottom the northern europeans are at the top and we need to maintain this elite are you seeing some trends here it's all about the elite and the trick was to build all, all these boarding schools prestigious boarding schools for the kids of politicians and influential you know tycoons of industry where the kids would be made into elite and everyone else would be dumbed down everyone has to be dumbed down and right after the descent of man was published in 1871 i believe that's when all the private boarding schools started to be springing up all the elite private boarding schools sprung up right then and there right after this crazy theory i mean i don't know what to say like this is absolutely insane I know. No, it's taken me a lot of research to do this. I'll put some sources in the description. We'll also have some sources on screen as you're watching this if you're on YouTube. 
But I think that's going to be about it because we got to wrap it up here. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry, Producer Brooke, for the amount of uh, editing and animating you're going to have to do. Um, that'll be fun this week. So uh, please do subscribe, email, add down in the description. Do we have a new playlist on the secret history of our school system? I'll add this to it, which you should really check out. You know, if you're not watching on YouTube, you should you can check out some animations. If you don't like YouTube, you can go check it out. This podcast out on Spotify, everything else, and I think that's about it. So please do subscribe, share, and like. And until next time, I've been your host JB, and I've been Chris Brooks, and we are signing off. Bye.